So you have a wardrobe full of clothes, but you have nothing to wear. You own a few pieces that you're absolutely obsessed with and yet you still have no outfits. Or you feel like you need to buy something new for every new occasion that you need to go to. Or you think that everyone on social media has a better fashion sense than you do and you just don't understand where the hell they're shopping. You're getting it all wrong. It only takes a few techniques to level up your fashion sense instantly. It's time to enter your stylish era and I'm going to teach you step by step. Here are the fashion secrets that nobody's telling you. As always, this video is going to be structured in different sections to make it super easy to understand. We're going to be covering how to find your personal style, how to find the confidence to wear the clothes you want to, how to level up the outfits you are wearing, how to save money when shopping, how to actually shop efficiently and smarter, how to start wearing colour, how to use outfit formulas in your favour to save time every single day, fashion rules you should always follow, and how to develop an outfit making mindset. Are you ready? Let's go. Chapter one, finding your aesthetic and the confidence to wear what you want every single day. Before we get into the tips, I wanna start this video with a disclaimer on the importance of dressing well and what this is gonna get you. This video is not superficial. This isn't so you can outshine others and become super hot and pretty because you already are. This is about being your most confident self and radiating the best energy you can, but also leveling up your life because of the clothes that you wear and therefore the message that you are giving across to everybody else. Because like it or not, fashion is a form of self-expression. Other people define you via the clothes on your body. Trust me when I say good personal style and the confidence with that gives you so much pretty privilege. If you go outside and you're a little bit more extra with the clothes that you're wearing, more people will look at you, smile at you, talk to you and be way more friendly. Friendly. Your fashion sense can literally open doors for you. I have been invited into rooms that I have no business being in purely because I dress richer than I am. I buy all of my clothes on the high street. They're all super affordable. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video. But because of the way that I construct my outfits, it gives off the message that I am successful, I am sophisticated, and I have money. Step number one to finding your personal style, use apps in your favor. I wanna introduce you guys to an app called Style Mind. It is completely free and it is a game changer in the way that you shop and the way that you dress. Now myself and so many others end up buying clothes we already own or very similar items just because we forget what's at the back of our wardrobes or we forget what our favorite outfits are because we haven't worn them in a long time or we just own too many clothes and we lose track of what we have. Every time I wear an outfit I'm proud of, I make sure I get a picture and I upload it onto the Style Mind app. And now I have an entire profile, like a catalog of my virtual wardrobe. And this way I know what my favorite pieces of clothing are, which outfits I've already worn and therefore might wanna repeat. There's nothing wrong with outfit repeating or outfits I really like and then can mix and match with others to create a new outfit without having to buy something new. It's really good for those of you who don't wanna post your outfit pictures on social media. Style Mind kinda of gives you that platform to be able to do it without the noise of Instagram. Instagram and TikTok. But my favorite thing about the Style Mind app is the amount of outfit inspiration you get from it. You scroll through the feed and you can find all of the latest trends and styles and things that everybody else is wearing. I take inspiration from so many different sources and then mix it all up together and adapt it to me. So if you want to be doing up share from Clueless and have your own virtual wardrobe, then download the Style Mind app. The link will be in the description and also find your outfit inspiration on there and give me a follow. Step number two, learn your preferences. Pay attention to what you find yourself leaning towards and liking when there's not a huge trend around. So yeah, there was the Y2K trend and now there's the clean girl aesthetic trend with quiet luxury and minimal jewels or graphic tees, whatever the trends are. What are you liking apart from those? What has stayed consistent over the last few years of your life that you have always worn and liked? When you walk into any store, what immediately grabs your attention? Is it the colorful items, neutral, different textures, t-shirts, tanks, jeans, skirts, heels, flats, trainers. I really found my personal style when I stopped thinking of money as an object. Like you need to walk into your favorite store and imagine that you had all of the money to spend in the world now what would you buy from there? So the best process to find what your personal style is goes something like this. Number one, stop following trends. We are done with it. Stop trying to look like everyone else. You are wasting money, time. You're going further away from your true authentic self and you're investing in pieces you're gonna wear for three months and then never again. Like, do you guys remember that trend like a year ago when everyone was wearing the color brown because it was super hip and trendy? Who is still wearing all brown outfits? No one. 
It's so dumb. You're gonna spend a day and go into all your favorite stores, be surrounded by an abundance of clothing and then figure out what you are leaning towards. Whether it's certain necklines of tops, whether it's the length of a skirt, whether it's the type of shoe or accessory. Look into the influencers you follow on social media and what style they have because you are following them for a reason and because you like the way they dress. Take notes from them. Oh, okay, I follow a lot of influencers that dress modestly, so I'm also interested in that. Go online and search celebrity street style. Go through all of the Google images and see what stands out to you. Don't don't feel pressured to commit at this moment. This is just you getting a taste for what your preferences are. And here are some questions you can ask yourself at the end of this process. Do I like to fit in or stand out? Colors or neutrals? Expensive or on a budget? Casual or extra? What are my top three favorite aesthetics? If you're like me, then you can't pick one. So are you into street style, goth, preppy, sophisticated, feminine. What textures do I like? This opened a whole new world for me. I am obsessed with feathers and sequins. So when it comes to buying statement pieces, I know instantly that's what I'm gonna gravitate towards because that has been my taste for years. And textures never go out of style. Denim's always been a thing, leather has, sequins have. It will always stay in and it will add that extra pop to your outfit. What do I feel confident in? Confident, not comfortable. Never ask yourself, oh, but what do I feel comfortable dressing in? Because a lot of the time I've heard so many people alter their fashion sense to what they think will be approved by others and then they think that's what they feel comfortable in. No. I honestly think when it comes to reinventing your style and being able to dress better, you need to step out of your comfort zone to find your true confidence in style. What items do I wear the most from my closet? And lastly, what do you want your wardrobe to say about you? Step number three is you need to own your style and stop caring about what other people think of you. I have had countless experiences with people in my life where they say, oh, but what is everyone else wearing? Or I can't turn up too dressy because everyone will stare. Or what will people think? Or no, people will notice that. Or it's not the norm to dress there in that place. Who cares? Do you not realize you're allowing other people to run your life for you? Most of the time, strangers who are completely irrelevant. Every single day you wake up and one of your first decisions is what you're going to wear that day. You're allowing other people to dictate the clothes that you wear on your body all day. The clothes that you're wearing on your body dictate how you walk, how you express yourself, how you feel about yourself that day. It is all down to you and what energy and meaning you want to give off. But since your mindset is already based on the opinions of others, let's just go with it to make this easier to understand. Instead of dressing down, to go unnoticed, fit in with the crowd and avoid people judging us. We're going to dress up to stand out and design the judgment that we receive from others. And my mindset with this is to never be caught lacking because you don't know who you're going to run into. And that's not to say that we dress to impress other people. No, no, no. But imagine you went out and you ran into your idol or somebody that you wanted to network with, somebody that you wanted to go into business with, your future business partner. So the moral of the story here is you always need to be prepared. You always need to look your best. Chapter two, styling hacks and how you can use these to make your everyday outfit decision making 10 times easier. This starts off with learning the color wheel. I cannot tell you how many times this little wheel has saved my life and led to me making the best outfit decisions when I was having wardrobe malfunctions for hours. So the way it works is that it's gonna tell you which colors to pair together to make sure you look put together and stylish. Now mixing colors in an outfit can be very daunting and scary and it can also be very risky, but this color wheel will save you. So let's say you have a pair of blue jeans you wanna wear, you go to the color blue on the color wheel and go down directly opposite which is where your oranges and yellows will be and that is what goes with blue so you'll wear blue maybe with like a white t-shirt and a little yellow handbag for the perfect pop of color and you'll look so put together and effortless more color combinations are red and green or pink and green blue and orange and yellow and purple Another one of my favorite styling hacks when it comes to color is using monotone outfits as an instant backup. This is the easiest way to get started with dressing in color and not be afraid of it. Black, all white, all red, all green, you name it. Similarly, you can try a tonal outfit. This is when you're wearing the same colors in different shades. For example, you might wear light wash blue jeans with a dark blue knit jumper. Another important thing to consider is that different colors connote different meanings. The colors you wear can actually influence the different perceptions that people have about you. So when it comes to important things like business meetings or interviews, and you're really counting on those first impressions, it's important to know which colors are gonna give you those brownie points. For example, wearing all black, you look smart, sophisticated, effortless, and chic. 
wearing red is always connoted with being sexy and sensual and flirtatious. Then there's pink, which is considered a very feminine and kind color. And then the last hack when it comes to playing with color is the three color rule. Essentially, this is about having three different colors in your outfits to make it look like you put a lot of effort and thought into it when really you're just following a certain formula. So an example of the three color rule in an outfit would be blue, white, and brown. Step number two to styling hacks is juxtaposition. In order to seem like you are a fashion styling pro, the key is to put two things together that don't make any sense. For example, lace and leather, a casual t-shirt and statement jewelry. I personally love that one. Wearing a blazer on its own as a dress as opposed to with a suit. Or wearing sweats or cargos with a really dressy top. And the final step for this chapter is building your outfit formulas. So there are three outfit formulas that I'm gonna share with you. The first one is about balancing the amount of skin that you're showing. For example, if you're wearing a short skirt, pair it with a blouse. If you're wearing a tiny bralette as a crop top, instead of pairing that with an equally short skirt, put it with wide leg, long flowy trousers. This isn't gonna apply to everyone. This is just a personal rule that I like to use and so many others, just so you don't go out showing too much skin or appearing too vulgar. However, if that is your style and you wanna wear your crop tops and your mini skirts, you go do that and have fun. I used to do that when I was 19 and that's what made me feel the most confident. But now at 22 years old, it's just not my personal style anymore and I'm kind of trying to lean more towards the modest side. So when I do wanna show a bit of skin, I like to balance it out by having the other areas of my body covered up. The second outfit formula is balancing your fancy clothing with your casual clothing. For example, you'll have a fancy top, casual bottoms, and then fancy shoes. Or you'll do a casual top, fancy bottoms, and then casual shoes again. This balances you out and it means that if you're not sure what to wear, you don't turn up to an event looking either too dressy or too casual. And with this formula, it also means you could wear these outfits anywhere because it's a mix of both. And then my last outfit formula is white plus anything the color white goes with literally anything and yes you probably would think that because it's a neutral color however beige doesn't go with everything and black certainly doesn't go with everything black and red makes you look like a ladybug black and yellow makes you look like a bumblebee black with other dark tones like maybe a dark green makes your outfit too intense especially in seasons like summertime whereas white can be worn all year round with any shade of any color and the final chapter chapter number three how to create your outfit making mindset how to shop properly, save money, and start dressing better, smarter. Step number one, donate or sell. You need to have an entire clear out of everything you own. If you haven't touched it in a long time, let it go. You know why? Because you keeping all of the clothes in your wardrobe that are mid and that you're a bit like eh on, what that's doing is it's skewing your entire perception of all of the clothes in your wardrobe, which is what constantly makes you think, I have so many clothes but nothing to wear. I have to keep shopping. Everyone else has better clothes than I do. And then once you've cleared out all of that space in your wardrobe, you can invest in new, timeless, versatile pieces that will make you feel like you always have something to wear every single time you open your wardrobe. Step number two, don't skip on the undergarments. This is what makes your outfit fit you perfectly, look flattering on your body. By undergarments, I mean Spanx, okay? Even I use Spanx, it smooths you out, it makes you look perfect in any dresses or skirts you wear. Make sure you have the different types of bras so then you can wear anything. I'm talking your normal bra, strapless bra, a stick-on bra, nipple covers, a plunging bra for when you wanna wear a plunging neckline. Make sure you own black and nude tights. This will save you in the winter time and it means you'll end up wearing your skirts more often. Invest in fashion tape. It's so cheap. You can get it from anywhere. And then when you're wearing shirts like this, I literally should have worn my fashion tape today. You basically would pin it there, tape it there, and then your shirt will like stick to you and stay in the place you want it to be. And then lastly, safety pin and thread is your best friend. The key to making anything fit you perfectly is you flip the item of clothing inside out, you put a safety pin on each side where the hem is on the inside, and then tie a string around it, tie the string, flip it back the right way, put it on, and then it would have cinched in your waist and it makes any dress fit you perfectly. Three, before you shop, evaluate where you spend most of your time. This was a trap I constantly fell into. I would go into a shop, I would see so many things I liked and buy it straight away, but why am I buying dresses and statement tops when I don't go to the club, I don't go on nights out, I don't have parties to go to? The places I spend the most time in is a shopping mall, restaurants, visiting my friends, working in cafes, running errands. So I need to cut down on the statement clothing and find versatile pieces I can wear every day but still look stylish in. Step four, invest in a few statement pieces. 
and these statement pieces you end up choosing have to undoubtedly make you the best dressed in the room, okay? Don't just buy a statement piece because everyone else is wearing it. It literally defeats the purpose of making a statement. Pieces that no one else is wearing that will instantly make you stand out. Step five, but spend 80% of your budget on versatile items that you can mix and match with anything else in your wardrobe. And no, these don't have to be neutral. I lean more towards trousers than I do mini skirts and then I invested in those staple pieces in loads of different textures, patterns and colours. On top of this, every time I go out shopping to buy something new, I think, am I going to wear it in five years? If the answer is no, I immediately put it down. Step number six, don't underestimate the power of accessorizing. This is gonna save you when you're buying timeless pieces. I can mix and match my accessories and make every outfit feel brand new and different no matter what I wear. If you're interested in the jewelry, you can shop mine via the link in the description. Step number seven, start spending smart. So when I'm out and about shopping or online shopping and I find an item that I like, before I add it to my cart, first I think, as I said before, will I wear this in five years? And if it's a yes, my second question is, do I have at least three items in my closet that this will go with? If the answer is no, I have to leave it there. Another hack in this step is to remember that you don't need to spend a lot to look stylish. Places like H&M and Zara can make you look so expensive and put together on a budget. And if you follow me on Instagram and you like the way I dress, every single thing I wear is either from Zara or ASOS or H&M mainly. Step number eight, buy more layering pieces. This is gonna maximize all of the items you already have in your wardrobe. Plus you can only have so many tops and trousers combinations and it's gonna get boring. When you add a layering element, instantly you look more stylish. For example, blazers, cardigans, shrugs, jewelry, jackets, fur coats, trenches. Step number nine, always base every outfit off one piece. If you really don't know what to wear, you go into your wardrobe and you pick out anything. Pick out a top, pick out a jean, a shoe, and then base your entire outfit around that one item. I just got this new top, so I would pair this with a denim jean, some white trainers, and a black handbag. And immediately it takes the entire stress out of choosing an outfit. Number 10, the last step. Don't overthink it and have fun because fashion is an art form. Do what feels right, Always value your confidence and please let go of what anybody else could ever think. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what you think. Remember, you can follow me on Instagram at Tamcor to see all of my outfits every single day. And remember, I post new videos on my YouTube every single week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Mwah.